fun for the gift of salvation. And I'm so excited to see you all. And I just want to start by saying, you know, on behalf of the organizers of this Ladies Empowerment Night 2021, I officially want to extend a warm, warm welcome to each one of you. I am so glad, so glad that you could join us. We are so delighted that you could be with us. You're refreshing us. Wow, oh, I see that smile, Pastor Esther. Keep the smiles coming. Those are very encouraging. Oh, so I am so delighted. We are also delighted that you could join us tonight for another power packed night. We have seen the hand of the Lord. We have enjoyed the Lord in his presence. And as we commence our fourth and final day, we just want to start together, walk this journey together, and we will end strong. We have been blessed. We have been blessed. Now, back home, we used to say, now, Mambo Badu, like more is still to come. So thank you so much for joining. Um, and for those joining us, for those joining, for those who are not here the, the yesterday or the day before or Thursday, I just want to say this is our fourth annual Ladies Empowerment Night. And it's so exciting. All honor and glory be to God that he has kept this vision strong, going strong, even stronger than before. We have seen the hand of the Lord uh, we have had testimonies of what God has done. So we are excited, excited as we come to a close and start letting you know, even as we close, start getting ready for next year. Start getting ready because uh, we are closing strong. Um, so this is the fourth um, annual empowerment and it's been awesome awesome you know under the great great leadership of our visionary uh pastor lucy painter you know uh just for those who don't know anything about this um our visionary ha you know the lord put a burden in her heart you know to empower women to create a platform where women can come together and be empowered and empower each other you, we know everything that goes on in the lives of ladies and women and i'm using the word a uh, 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 woman because i know we have uh younger ones i see Kina, anita Flo, and we have others that are even younger but you know what they are in that journey and they are headed to uh, uh there will be women too uh so i know sometimes i i, I do say women ladies you know, it's all good. So um, I want us to get started because I don't want to waste time. We have a lot, a lot going on. Uh, and as I said, you know, the Lord put the burden in Pastor Lucy's heart. She obeyed. Now she has done her end of, of the deal. She created this platform. And now we know the Lord does not disappoint. When you meet your end of the bargain, the Lord comes through and he does what God does best. You know, he brings his presence in here. And so I just want to urge each one of us, you know, to come expectant. Let us release ourselves to the Lord as we start. I just want us to start with inviting the presence of God. Um, start in, with inviting the presence of God so we can move on, so we can move on. So let us just take a minute um, to call upon the heavens. You know, uh, Father, we want to experience an open heaven tonight as we have seen you come through. So I just want each one of us to take a minute. There are things in your life, there are things in your heart 
that I may not be able to articulate. So I want everybody to take a minute, just bring yourself to the Lord, release yourself to the Lord. If there is anything the Lord needs to move from your heart as we, as we embark on this tonight, if it, there is any unforgiveness, any unrepented sin, let us cleanse ourselves as we get ready to get into holy ground. It is now that we are meeting with the Lord. This is crucial. This is an important moment in our life. It is going to be a life changing night. So everybody, I just want to give you one minute to whisper something to the Lord, whatever it is that you are expecting from the Lord tonight. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Father, we invite your presence. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we love you. We invite your presence. We welcome you. We do not want to start. We do not want to start without your presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, because when we come together in your name, you are always in our midst. Father, we have felt you. We have seen you. We have heard you. We give all the glory and honor to your name. Even as we begin, Lord, we just want to uh, pour ourselves out unto you. We just want to break before you, God. We were breaking before you, Father. Oh, Lord Jesus, have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Cleanse our hearts. Cleanse our hearts, creating us a new heart as we come before you tonight. Create our a new heart in ourselves, Lord, that heart, that heart that's going to be responsive to you, that heart that will be sensitive to you. And as we are still in the mood of prayer, uh, heavens open, heavens open, heavens open, we're going to uh, experience an open, have an open heaven tonight. I just want to invite my mom Pastor Dorcas Karanja, a uh, victory in Christ ministry in that mode of prayer. I just want to invite you uh, to, to close this opening session with a prayer. Start with a prayer. And now everybody has whispered something to the Lord. So you tie that together and we agree. We agree that we are in holy ground. When Moses went to, the, uh, to see the burning bush, you know, the Lord said, wait a minute, you you know, take off your shoes because you are in holy ground. And that is the one moment, that's the one minute that everybody took to step into the holy ground. So there will be no limitations or any stronghold out of the way, no limitations, just the manifestation of the power of God, just the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Pastor Dorcas, take over and open with a prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. We worship you, our Father. Yes, Lord. We give you all the praise that we are here to dine with you tonight. Mm -hmm. Knowing that, Lord God, you never, you never gather your people together in vain. Mm -hmm. And that's why today we do believe that this is the fourth day for this summit, oh God. And in the midst of it all, we do believe it's by faith that all the destinies are unlocked, oh God. Yes. All the destinies tonight, since the first day of this meeting, mm -hmm. when we had the word of now, all the destinies are unlocked, oh God. Receive all the glory because all the purposes as we gather together, Leaving this meeting, each and everyone will know their purposes, oh God. We'll all know our purpose. Father, we thank you. We know that, Lord God, that you have unlocked our joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And when you have been watching and looking of us, oh God, you have found a people that their joy has been locked in. But today, 
as we leave this meeting, oh God, we do believe together by faith that our joy is unlocked, oh God. Our peace is unlocked, dear master. It's not in vain that we gather together. Father, we worship you and we bless your holy name. Our love is unlocked, King of glory. Our oneness and unity is unlocked in the families, oh God, and even in the body of Christ, even in the nations, because we are called to stand in the gap. All the women that have been logging in, oh God, you have given us a work to do. Jehovah, we thank you and we worship you, waiting to dine, to dine with you, dear Lord. We worship you even for those who will gather with us tonight. We declare this hour, Jehovah God, that Jehovah, before we leave, we will testify of your goodness. We cover each and everyone that is ready to log in with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Even the speaker, Jehovah Father, will speak your own oracles, O oh God. Receive all the glory and honor and majesty, knowing that Lord God will testify to the nations in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Pastor Dorcas, Victory in Christ Ministry. I understand when I hear the word victory, you know, victory comes after battle. And I can imagine, mom, the battles that you have fought. I salute you, general, in the faith. You know, there are things, there are ways you have paved for us, you know, there are battles you have fought and won because victory is after fighting a battle. There are battles you have fought and won that we will never have to fight because you went ahead of us and fought the battles. We appreciate you. We appreciate you, mom. And I'm seeing so many people are joining us. I, you know, I'm excited. Welcome, welcome. Jump in, jump in. And I just urge everybody to please release yourselves unto the Lord. Release your mind, release your heart. Don't limit God in everything. Don't limit any experience in the presence of the Lord. I just want to take this chance as we are still in that mode of worship to, um, uh, to invite our psalmist, Anita Flo, and Waria Rawero to take us before the Lord, that we continue uh, in that presence of the Lord. Take us uh, in worship, in praise as the Lord leads you and conclude that session with a prayer. So my Bible tells me that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Sorry, just give me one second. Ni 
jambo livi
Jesus, we worship your name. We glorify you for you are God. Thank you for your presence in our midst, oh God. Thank you, Spirit of Almighty God, for your presence. We thank you and we worship you. We worship you, oh God. Even as we continue to worship you, take charge of our lives. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, be exalted in our lives, oh God. We lift you, we lift you, oh God. We enthrone you, the King, in our lives. We enthrone you, the King, in our lives. And we declare that there is none besides you. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for gathering us that we may exalt your name. Thank you for gathering us that we may honor you, that we may worship you, oh God. What an honor to worship you. What an honor to come at your presence and just to lift your holy name. What an honor just to approach your throne 
just to pour out our hearts to you, to tell you that we love you. We bless you for you, are God. We worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God, and we love you, Father. And we declare that there is none beside you. You alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the glory. From eternity to eternity, you remain to be God. From everlasting to everlasting, you remain to be God. Oh, you are the beginning and the end, ancient of days, Alpha and Omega. We bless your holy name, rock of ages. You are worthy and you are God all by yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Spirit of Almighty God. We worship you and we adore you. Thank you for you are a good God to us. You are a loving Father and we worship you. And we worship you and we worship you. We adore you, we adore you, we adore you. Oh, Shandala Baba Bosaya. Mandala la la bosha la bagando ribosando. Rekata la 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 mashande le bosia tabahai. Makata la mahande le bosota la bagandi. We bless you, we bless you, our God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Vizazi, hadi vizazi. Vya kufahamu wewe, ulie mungu wakale, na ulie mungu wa leo. Kazi zako zaonyesha, uku wako wewe, umetukuka, umeinuliwa, ewe bwana. Vizazi hadi vizazi vya kufahamu wewe ulie Mungu wa kale na ulie Mungu wa leo kazi zako zaonyesha uku wako wewe umetukuka umeinuliwa Ewe bwana, o vizazi, vizazi, hadi vizazi, vya kufahamu wewe, ulie mungu wa kale, na ulie mungu wa leo, kazi zako zaonyesha, uku wako wewe. Umetukuka, umeinuliwa, ewe bwana. Kweli wewe, kweli wewe, wewe ni mungu. Kweli wewe, wastahili. Umeketi juu sana. Kwenye kiti cha enzi umejivika utukufu wewe ni Mungu kweli wewe kweli wewe wewe ni Mungu kweli wewe wastahili Umeketi juu sana kwenye kiti cha enzi umejivika utukufu wewe ni Mungu Nikitazama matendo yako na nguvu zako wewe ya dhihirika machoni mwangu wengine wote ni miungu uumbaji wako waonyesha hekima yako wewe watukuzwa kati ya mataifa milele bwana Nikitazama matendo yako na nguvu zako wewe ya dhihirika machoni mwangu wengine wote ni miungu 
Umbaji wako waonyesha hekima yako wewe watukuzwa kati ya mataifa milele bwana kweli wewe kweli wewe wewe ni Mungu kweli wewe wastahili Umeketi juu sana kwenye kiti cha enzi umejivika utukufu wewe ni Mungu kweli wewe kweli wewe wewe ni Mungu kweli wewe wastahili umeketi juu sana kwenye kiti cha enzi umejivika utukufu wewe ni Mungu mfalme mwe ma mwaminifu baba muweza yote una nguvu haushindwi okea utukufu falme wetu falme mwe ma mwaminifu baba Mweza yote una nguvu haushindwi pokea utukufu twakupa heshima na sifa zote ewe Mungu umetukuka Yesu tunakupa twakupa heshima na sifa zote ewe Mungu umetukuka twakupa heshima na sifa zote Ewe Mungu umetukuka Twakupa heshima na sifa zote Ewe Mungu umetukuka Wewe ni Mungu mpasu wa bahari Hao fananishwi na kitu kingine Wewe ni Mungu mtuliza mawimbi Hao fananishwi na kitu kingine Wewe ni Mungu mpasu wa bahari hao fananishwi na kitu kingine wewe ni Mungu mtuliza mawimbi hao fananishwi na kitu kingine Unafanya mambo ambayo mwanadamu hawezi kufanya Unatoa faraja ambayo mwanadamu hawezi kutoa Hao fananishwi na kitu kingine Hao fananishwi na kitu kingine unafanya mambo ambayo 
Mwanadamu hawezi kufanya Unaponya magonjwa ambayo Wanadamu hawezi kuponya Unatupa furaha ambayo Wanadamu hawezi kutupa Umetupa amani ambayo Wanadamu hawezi kutupa how fananishwi na kitu kingine how fananishwi na kitu kingine katikati ya ghadhabu unakumbuka rehema how fananishwi na kitu kingine Mungu mwenye rehema unatupa neema au fananishwi na kitu kingine Mungu mwenye nguvu upungu kiwi kamwe how fananishwi na kitu kingine unafanya mambo ambayo mwanadamu hawezi kufanya unafanya mambo ambayo mwanadamu hawezi kufanya unatupa furaha ambayo Wanadamu hawezi kutupa au fananishwi na kitu kingine au fananishwi na mtu yeyote au fananishwi na mfalme yoyote how fananishwi na kitu kingine usiye shindwa usiye shindwa wewe ni mungu usiye shindwa usiye shindwa Usiye shindwa, wewe ni mungu. Usiye shindwa. Usiye shindwa. Usiye shindwa, wewe ni mungu. Usiye shindwa. Usiye shindwa Usiye shindwa Wewe ni Mungu Usiye shindwa Mataifa yote yanakufahamu kuwa wewe ni Mungu Usiye shindwa na si wana wako tumekufahamu kuwa wewe ni Mungu usiye shindwa usiye shindwa usiye shindwa wewe ni Mungu Usiye shindwa Usiye shindwa Usiye shindwa Wewe ni Mungu Usiye shindwa Usiye shindwa Usiye shindwa Wewe ni Mungu Usiye shindwa Usiye shindwa 
usieshindwa wewe ni Mungu usieshindwa 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 wewe ni Mungu usieshindwa Usie shindwa usie shindwa wewe ni Mungu usie shindwa Father we exalt your holy name We bless you for you are an unchanging God you are an unfailing God you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly about what we can think or even imagine according to the power that is at work within us we exalt you for you are able we exalt you for you are able we exalt you for you are mighty we exalt you for you are faithful we exalt you for you are god we exalt you for you are god you are what says in jeremiah 32:27 you are the god of all flesh is there anything that is impossible with you is there anything that is too hard for you is there anything that can challenge you you are able to do that which we cannot be able to do for you are god all by yourself we exalt your majesty we declare that you are god we declare that you are god the bible says that you are rebuke the chariots and the horses lest still father god of jacob you are to be feared we exalt you and we adore your holy name is there any other god beside you there is no other god beside you you want to be lifted you want to be exalted you want to be feared by all nations and tonight we declare that you are god in unity we declare that you are god in unity we declare that you reign in unity we declare that you are exalted in unity we declare that we have no other god but to you in the mighty name of the lord jesus even as we continue being in your presence take charge holy spirit of god take preeminence and do that which only you can do for you alone are god for you alone are god for you alone are god thank you for you being with us thank you for your presence that is in our midst thank you for you been ministering to our hearts thank you because you are with us oh god you are immanuel you are god with us and you are god in us take charge Church of our of our lives take preeminence for there is no other god beside you in the mighty name of jesus we bless you for you are worthy we bless you for you are worthy we join the heavenly host to declare that you are holy you are holy you are holy 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 is the god of almighty the whole earth is filled with your glory take all the glory jesus take all the glory jesus we love you and we exalt you we declare that you are god we declare that you are god in the mighty name of the lord jesus you were faithful you were faithful you were perfect in all your ways in the mighty name of the lord jesus for thou lord are a shield for us our glory and the lifter of our heads we bless you and we exalt your name in the mighty name of the lord jesus we worship you spirit of almighty god we thank you our god and our savior we thank you for loving us we thank you for your grace we thank you for your grace that you have released upon us oh god in the mighty name of Jesus who are an honor to worship you who are an honor to bow down in your presence and just to declare that you are God who are an honor just to enter into your presence into the holies of holies to declare that you are worthy to declare that you are holy in the mighty name of Jesus heavens declare your glory heavens declare your glory and the earth is full of your glory the earth proclaim the works of your heart you want to be exalted Oh rasha la bagandele le bosaya mandara la 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 bashandele le bosaya rantololo boshala magande just worship him in the language of the spirit rendorololo bosaya mandele mahasia la bagande rikata la mazia la bagande we bless you and we give you glory we bless you and we give you glory oh you deserve it oh god you deserve it oh god you never share your glory with any man and so we give you all the glory we give you all the glory for what you have done we 
give you all the glory for what you're doing. We give you all the glory for what you will do. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, receive our praises tonight. Receive our praises tonight. Receive adoration tonight. Receive all the glory tonight. For you alone are God. For you alone are worthy. We worship you and we adore you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, we worship. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Shanda na 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 musai. Bala 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 Glory be to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory be to Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, little sister Anita Flo. Oh, Wariara, for taking us in such a powerful, powerful session. All oh, the glory and honor be to God. Our women of God, women of God, let us seize this moment when the presence of the Lord is so much. It's overwhelming. It is overwhelming. Let not this time pass you by. You know, the Lord ordained these four days, set them apart to show up. And when he shows up, he shows off. You know, it is all about him. It is all about him. So seize the moment, seize the moment. Let us release ourselves to the Lord. Let us receive everything that the Lord has for us. I, I, you know, again, I just want to welcome everybody. I see so many more people have joined us. We welcome you. We are delighted to see you as we share, as we share in this presence of the Lord, what the Lord has for us. You know, the Lord loves women. It must be for a reason that even when Christ rose from the dead, that he first revealed himself to a woman. There has to be something about it. You know, when a lot of times, you know, Jesus would heal and he would tell our, our people, do not tell everybody, do not tell anyone. But we see when the, 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 the woman are at the well, uh, is healed and set free, you know, how she went spreading the gospel and how so many people, you know, came to know the Lord. There is something about women. And I know, you know, we've been blessed since Thursday. Tonight, tonight, we have the Apostle Lucy Muthami, she is the speaker for tonight. And when you hear a thee before, it means, yes, it's that one that you have heard about. Yes, it's that one that somebody told you about by the grace of God, a very humble woman of God who's anointed. She is speaking with us tonight and I am just overwhelmed by what God is doing in the ministry and especially among among women when I see the generals that have uh, are gone before us when I see you know uh, how we, we we are in the kingdom how this you know generals in faith so many of you I can't even mention your names uh, and including you know Pastor Lucy you know Mesim Young in age, but she is a general in the faith. You know, the battles that she has fought. And I'm thinking about even mom who prayed, the speaker who's just about uh, uh, to speak tonight. You know, women that God is using and has used in such a mighty way. And that the desire they have and the commitment to even bring up us, little babies in the kingdom, and even trusting us trusting us even with a microphone. God is doing something. You know, they've been so committed 
to nurturing, when I think about all these women of faith, you know, I am reminded of when John the Baptist, you know, was um, introducing Jesus and, and talking about, you know, he who is to come and he was saying, I'm not even worthy to even untie the, the, the sandals. And that is how, you know, some of us are when we look at you generals sitting down, you know, sitting down, trying to raise us up. There is a movement of God and the book of Isaiah, if you read the book of Isaiah, you know, it, it explains and kind of sets the, uh, the stage and it, it has, you know, that uh, meaning and that theme that comes about that when the kingdom of God takes its position, even the Gentiles will bow, meaning when the kingdom of God takes its uh, position, even the world will be looking for counsel from the church. And that is why there is a powerful movement of women being positioned to their positions. And I just want to encourage us uh, with something little here as we get ready to hear the word of God. Um, and I'm, you know, because sometimes we women just take care of everybody else, you know, and everything else, and we forget who we are. We lose ourselves in the in the in the midst of taking care of everything else. And I just want to borrow some words uh, from Pastor Jane Womai uh, from London, because I cannot. I'm trying to say this, but I cannot say it better than her. So I just want to borrow her words. And when she stands to speak uh, uh, in front of women, she likes to say that I am aware of who I am standing before. She likes to say that I understand. I understand who I'm speaking to. I understand that this is the greatest, the most powerful force on earth after the Holy Spirit, you know, it's only the woman who shares a name with the Holy Spirit. Remember, you know how, you, we know how powerful the Holy Spirit is. When the disciples were told uh, uh, by Jesus, do not leave Jerusalem until I send you a helper. And then the only other person who is called a helper in the Bible is a woman, you know, back in the book of Genesis, that I will um, make you um, a helper, you know, because a woman has so much potential, you know, so much potential to perform, so much potential to influence everything around them everything they touch and that that is why you know women we are being called you know uh we were told uh that it is now from thursday and then on friday uh when we were being told about what to do in the midnight hour we were reminded that we have to step up rise up you know, into our positions and 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 put on our praise because we have we have a lot of work to do. Another quote that I I I always remember, and this is from Eleanor Roosevelt. You know, and she said that a woman is like a tea bag. You cannot tell how strong she is until you put her in hot water. This is the kind of potential that women have. You know, when a woman is put in hot water, you may see, you know, like a tea bag, a woman, you know, quiet and humble and looks harmless, looks like they, you know, they can do nothing, they know nothing. But wait until, you know, a, a tea bag is dropped into hot water and it changes, it affects everything around it. And this is how we are women. And we've been told it's now. And the question is, how are you using your influence as a woman? All the potential you have, you know, the, the influence that we have to change everything around us. How are you using your influence? And I just want to remind ourselves. And sometimes many of us get stuck at the point of saying, you know, uh, that I'm, 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 I'm praying, I'm trying to find out what my calling is. And we were reminded 
on Thursday that it is now that we have to start praising God, start doing what we have to do. And we have, you know, our first calling when you don't know what uh, you are calling is or what you need to do, we start by what we know. Our first calling is to our life, you know, a life in Christ Jesus. Our first calling is to righteousness in Christ, in Christ Jesus, to tarry in the presence of the Lord. Because when we do the things that the Lord wants us to do, then your calling will find you. You know, I'm thinking um, in the Bible, there are so many divine occurrences that happened to regular people when they were just doing, you know, mundane activities. You know, when we think about, uh, when we think about, um, you know, Timothy, the life of Timothy, and we remember the grandmother, Louise, and also uh, the mother, Eunice, all they were doing is raising up this boy, but they had no idea what they were doing in the kingdom everywhere we are may it be in our homes we have the potential to influence to impact you know to change everything around us so it is so important as women whatever it is it is a now thing do the next the next right thing that you are supposed to do and i always remember a play that i watched on tv at some point and and this 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 school won the play and they were so excited and one girl was dancing and 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 you know and the uh, the, the cameramen were just seeing this girl and you know they, they they go to her and they thought maybe she was you know the main character or something and they go to this little girl who was so excited you know how reporters they like to interview you know whoever was in the center stage and so they, they go to this girl who was so excited and they ask, oh, so what, which role were you playing in the play? And this girl said, oh, I was the tree. And you know, uh, and, and, and she said, you know, I was the best tree ever. And this is how, you know, we are called in the kingdom. You may be in a season of being a tree, be the best tree there has ever been because this girl knew that our win as a team is a, you know, is a win, our victory as a team. If I needed to be a tree here, I am going to be the best tree ever. And you can imagine being a tree in a play. When you are a tree, you are supposed to, you know, almost not even breathe, you know, unless it's windy and it wasn't windy then. So she was supposed to be still all covered up with leaves and everything. Nobody saw her, had her or anything. And yet, and yet she was so proud of the win that their team had won. If it's a season that you have been called to be a tree, come on woman, be the best tree there has ever been for the kingdom of God. You know, and, and, and I'm also reminded David, is minding his uh, 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 you know father's sheep and the brothers are uh, uh, you know fighting trying to fight Goliath and so David is asked by the father to bring the brothers some lunch you know I don't know whether it was some spaghetti and meatballs but but all I know is that David takes the lunch obediently he did not feel like or oh, now they think I'm a lunch boy. You know, the important ones are there and I'm the lunch boy here bringing lunch. But we see David takes the lunch to the brothers. And this is what opened his opportunity to fight Goliath. He became a hero from fighting Goliath and he was bringing you know lunch like a lunch boy and so the lord has just been reminding sometimes we get stuck saying i'm, I'm trying to find out my calling we have been called to serve in the kingdom of god our first calling is a life in christ jesus so wherever you are if you're setting your 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 your, your kitchen table breakfast for the kids and you're telling them about about the lord you are already in your calling Eunice and, and Louis, you know, grandmother and mother to Timothy did not even think they, were, they, they had been called. But listen, Paul is in jail wondering, who am I going to 
sent in the church in, uh, in Ephesus. And here is little Timothy who had been taught by the grandmother. So I don't know a woman of God. I don't know a lady where you are, but we have to bloom where we are planted. Do not wait until you, you get a, 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 you know, whatever kind of calling you may, you may be thinking or looking for. We have been called to serve the kingdom. So may we serve now. You know, we were told we can't wait until tomorrow. It is now midnight hour. We worship through it and worship into our breakthrough. And we cannot complain. That is discrediting God. So we have to wear our praise and shout our praise praise in any any circumstance i just want to welcome everybody back i'm seeing oh people are still joining we are so excited 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 we are getting ready to hear the word of god so i just i just wanted to remind us women wherever you are you can bloom right where you are so let us start now these empowerment nights when we go back home, I wish this could be every day, but we are pumped up, we are empowered so that we can start whatever it is that we need to start, you know, right away. I want us to just appreciate the clergy, you know, the servants of the word, the anointed, you know, people of God who serve in the kingdom before we hear the word. Whenever I go somewhere, you know, they're, 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 they're women ministers or people who have been anointed. I am very careful if I get a chance to connect with them, to rub shoulders a little bit with them. I like to do that because my Bible tells me a story about a man who was anointed and then he died long after he was dead and his bones had dried up. My Bible tells me his name is Elisha. He, he's, you know, a dead man, you know, uh, you know, a, a man is uh, uh, killed and thrown and falls and touches the bones of the anointed man of God. And this man came back to life. So listen, somebody, when you see the anointed of the Lord, you will never know what they may awaken in you. I just want to take a moment to appreciate um, uh, the ones I can see here. I am seeing our minister yesterday. I think Pastor Lucy will help me to quickly spotlight uh, the ministers of God. I'm seeing uh, uh, Pastor Susan Mongai. Shout out to you. Thank you for coming back for more. You really blessed us yesterday. I see Bishop Esther Makumbi. Uh, she's there looking beautiful, beautiful. Shout out to you, woman of God. Uh, who else do I see? Pastor Esther, I see you. And that full smile, amen and amen. Woo, woo, woo. I'm trying to save something over there for last. Woo, Pastor Doreen Otipo. Oh my goodness. Always looking so good. We love you so much, Pastor Doreen. Um, who else? Pastor Lucy, do you see any other uh, minister who am I missing? I see another Pastor Dorcas. <laughs> Amen. Wave at us. Amen. Amen. Um, let me see. Anybody else? Am I missing anybody? Any other pastor? Wave at me. And now we, we have to be making it so that you add the pastor or something title before your name so we can know who you are. But I just want all of you to feel, you know, appreciated appreciated we honor the anointing over your life and thank you so much for being with us um i'm looking at the time and it's gone 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 um i am going to invite um our visionary pastor lucy um to pray for the word and invite the speaker just in the interest of time and we'll do uh, everything else after. 
but I want us to have that, that moment. And I see young ones with us. We thank God, we thank God. Miss Patience Wairimo, looking beautiful over there. Thank you for getting ready to take over. All right, Pastor Lucy. Amen. Amen. We bless the Lord. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Leah. Thank you uh, for the wonderful time that we are having in the presence of the Lord. I feel overwhelmed. I feel humbled by what the Lord is doing in our midst. And I feel so expectant. Uh, I feel that the Lord is already here. And I feel like I don't need to talk much or do anything. I just want to hear from the Lord. And so let's pray as we prepare our hearts to hear from the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the work that you have begun in us, O oh God. Thank you for the visitation that you have started in our hearts, O oh God, and the stirring up, O oh God, as your servant speaks, dear Lord. May you continue, dear Father, to stir up our hearts, to impact us, to deliver us, to heal us, O oh God, to impact us, O oh Lord, and whatever we need at a personal level, dear Father, for you are a Father who knows us by name, O oh God. We yield ourselves to you, dear Father, tonight, and we expect from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight we have Apostle Lucy Mudami from Delaware, a woman of God I respect, a, a woman of God who has worked with me over the years in my times of midnight. She has been a friend and when my morning came, we have laughed with her, given thanks with her and she is a true friend. And when I asked her to come and share, she said, yes, I will be available. And I call her a bulldozer in the kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, those, those powerhouses. So be expectant. I say, do not limit God. I'm going to repeat that. Don't limit God. When you are worshiping, I had an encounter. I had, a, I had my visitation and I'm expecting more. And I believe even where you are, that the Lord will continue visiting us. So don't limit God. Uh, just expect anything from God because he has many ways. So open your heart and be ready. Be ready for your deliverance. Be ready for your healing. Be ready for your divine visitation. Because he is God, a father who changes not. And behold, this is his servant who he honors and is going to use tonight for his glory. Welcome, Apostle Lucy. Amen. Thank you so much uh, for this beautiful welcome and this invitation in the presence of the Lord. I bring you my greeting this day of our Lord. I bring you my greeting in the name of the Lord Jesus the name that is exalted above every other name. I am a witness of the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and I'm so excited in that Lord's presence this hour. How I thank God for the gift of life. Now I thank God for the honor that he has given me as his, uh, as his daughter in the kingdom at such a time like this. The honor of giving me his presence, the honor of giving me his name, the honor of giving me his Holy Spirit, who is a deposit that guarantees that he has given me an inheritance in heaven. What a joy it is. I give all the glory to God. Thank you so much, all the organizers of this conference and the wonderful work that the Lord has given you to do and the obedience that you have carried this assignment with. May the Lord bless you abundantly. That worship session was such an, a blessing 
such a revitalizing se session in the presence of God. We have been ministered to, and may the Lord bless those ministers of music and ministers of worship in the presence of our God. May the Lord replenish your spirit. May the Lord energize your spirit more and more. May the Lord download the songs of Zion in your spirit continually, that you'll continue to be an impact of blessing to the body of Christ. May the name of Jesus be exalted. You will realize, and I know within the last three days, as we come to the climax of this conference and this gathering, you will realize that there is the days of one man show got finished a long time ago. The Lord has given or placed a demand for teamwork, has placed a requirement for a teamwork on all that he has called, all that he has anointed, all that he has given a calling unto. He is demanding that we work together so that we can fulfill the assignment of the kingdom together so that we can walk it together and fight the common enemy together and win in the name of Jesus. I thank God because this has been manifested, this has been portrayed in this gathering and in this uh, beautiful fellowship that the Lord has given us. And I know that it shall be so more and more, even as we proceed and advance into this year, which has just begun. It is such a blessing that the Lord has given us victory over the first month of 2021. And we can look with expectation, according to his word in Psalms 5, we can look with expectation on the coming of months of this year and declare confidently that the Lord who has been with us in the beginning of the year, he will be with us in the proceeding, uh, or yes, in the proceeding days and months of the, uh, this year. And that he who has been with us before, he who has fought our battles before, he who has silenced our enemies before, he will also, even now, silence the foe, silence Silence the avenger and establish the power of his hand, even so that we shall not be disappointed. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Blessed be his name. Ah, thank you, Jesus. We have been given a beautiful uh, theme of this conference. And I do believe that those that have gone ahead of me have done quite a thorough work. I was able to get in and out, unfortunately, uh, for a few uh, minutes of the sessions, I was able to grasp a little bit of what was going on and I was excited in the Lord's presence. And I knew surely the Lord is speaking uh, the Lord is speaking the same word to all of us. That means that is the Rema word. It's the now word. And God will be glorified even as we enhance that word as the word of the Lord and run with it into the course of this year, even as the Lord has spoken that this is the year to move on. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to his name. There's a word the Lord has given me and allow me to begin uh, approaching it with a disclaimer. I don't think I'll call it a disclaimer, but let me phrase it this way. Uh, the Lord is speaking to women at this time, and I know that he's also speaking to men equally because he is calling the summoning of the fighting men. That means the men and women whom have, who have uh, been enlisted in the end time war so that we can join up together, both the men and the women, in order to fulfill the end time purpose of the kingdom. But I see the reason why the Lord has gathered us in this such a setting right now is to remind us of something important that he would like us to, uh, to, to connect with to connect with so that our spirits are more sensitive and are more focused and are more connected to what God is saying. And that is why rightly he has given us this scripture and this theme at this time, my God, so that we'll be able to connect what we, with what God is saying. And what am I saying in many words? I want to speak something about favor, something about favor. Now, I want to let us know, and I know many of us know, that you cannot work hard to earn favor. You cannot explain favor. You cannot uh, 
bribe your way to favor. You cannot even uh, go to school to learn to receive favor. Favor is just given. It is, uh, yes, it is just given. We are told about those people who received favor from the Lord or who found favor with God. One such man is the man Noah. And the Bible says that Noah found favor with God. He did. Noah found favor with God. And at the time when there was so much profanity, when there was so much disobedience and a great falling away, now when the Lord, the spirit of the Lord was contending with men, uh, such a time there was found a man who found favor with God. That is interesting. He did not need to have done anything. He only needed to walk upright and blameless and God for his own reason chose him and showed him his favor. Look at a man called Abraham. Abraham says, if I have found favor with God. So God favored, favors people just according to his own choice. Look at Moses. He says, you have favored me and you have been telling me that I have found favor with you. So it's not that he had done anything really. It is that God in his ultimate choice, he had called those servants and many others and had just shown them favor. I thank God that in the New Testament, God himself, through Jesus Christ, has given us favor. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, that in the time of favor, I had you. In the day of salvation, I visited with you. Now, in the time, that means time, favor has a time, and it is within the fullness of, of that time that God reveals what he calls favor unto his people. And he says, in the time of favor, in that time of favor, I visited, I had you. In the time of favor, I had you. Glory to God. In the time of favor, I'm repeating intentionally, I had you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. That is the Lord saying. And he says something important after that. He says, now I tell you, I tell you that now is the time of God's favor. Now is the time of God's favor. And now so many of us, especially those that are of the female gender, I'll call it that way. Those of us that are of the female gender, we like to be rich in words, to tell of the favor of the Lord upon us. If I greeted you and I have heard this said and done many times, many people will respond like this. I am blessed and I'm highly favored. How are you, my sister? I am blessed and I'm highly favored. I am blessed and I'm highly favored. But there is a situation that I'll talk about right now that when we come to the actual, actual uh, the receiving and actualizing the favor that we claim to be flowing in, we begin to struggle a little bit because as women, we want to feel like there is something we can do to pay back the favor that we have freely given. Okay, I will say that once again. We feel although favor comes purely from the giver, that means from God, although it is God who in his own timing, in his own purpose, in his own reason, in his own divine choice, gives favor to whomsoever he will. And he has said in his word, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and 2, he says that in the time of favor I had you, and I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Once we begin to connect with that favor, immediately we feel, begin to feel like we can insert uh, uh, some wax, some wax into that favor so that we feel like we deserve it. We feel like we have earned it. We feel like uh -uh, we can't just be given favor and it is favor, just favor. We feel like, no, there is something I should do. Maybe I should knit a sweater quickly and I should give back because of the favor that I have received. Maybe I should bake something little like a cake and maybe show back, you know, that is our nature. That is our cultural nature. 
That is our human nature. That is quote unquote our women nature. You feel like, no, you can't give me this just for free. What did I do? How did I please you this well enough that you would open the doors of favor for me? How did I, what did I, uh, what should I do in return? What should I give back in return? And for some reason, because we are wired like that, we feel like we want to pay back the favor or to return the favor. We don't imagine that we can be given something freely without having done anything, without first having to pay for it or without first having to earn it or without first having to do something that really is tangible in our minds, in our eyes, in our understanding. But I need to introduce us to the God of favor who does not require of you to have be done anything at all. You don't have to have done anything. You do not need to have earned some kind of anything to become anything or to be given God's favor. God told Moses, I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. I will show my favor to whom so I will show favor. I will have mercy upon who I will have mercy. So it is God's sovereign and divine choice to give a human being his favor and to show him favor. The book tells me, in Psalms chapter number 30, if you look at verse number seven, the Bible says that when the Lord favored me, not if he favored me, the moment the Lord favored me, he made my royal mountain to stand strong. Glory to God. When Lord, you favored me. When Lord, you favored me. You caused my mountain to stand strong. Glory be to Jesus. But when you hid your face from me, I was dismayed. That means favor goes along with the Lord revealing and his face upon you. The Lord making his face to shine upon you. No, it does not depend on your level of education. It does not depend on how many people love you. It does not depend on uh, your marital status. No, no, no. It is God himself deciding out of his divine divine plan and purpose to reveal and make his face to shine upon you. And then his favor reaches you. Look at Psalms chapter 30 and verse number seven. Lord, when you favored me, when you favored me, did we not read that now is the time? So there is a time that God favors somebody. Glory to God. And now he says, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain to stand strong. There's nothing I did. It is the fullness of time that came and God decided to favor me. This will be important as a back, uh, background or uh, yes, as a background or a grounding to what the Lord is going to speak to somebody's heart tonight. Glory be to Jesus. When the Lord favored me. He made my mountain to start strong. Does he not say that he clothes us with favor as an ornament? So he is coming to make one more beautiful. He is coming to enhance the beauty of one when he gives you and shows you his favor. He also says that he surrounds us with his favor as a rampant or as a guard. Favor is a guard. I love this verse that says that favor opens doors of fame. Ah, favor opens doors. When the Lord fav favors you, he opens your doors. Glory to Jesus. And I know this may not be the scripture quotation. I've had a person who said that I believe it's true, that it is favor that begins to make you famous. It is favor that makes you famous. Glory to God. You have seen many people of much learning, 
of much accomplishment, of much articulacy, but if favor is not upon them, I'm telling you, they will live through their lifetime on this earth and nobody will ever notice them. I want to make reference of the young lady that we saw the other week of the inauguration. I don't know her name, I have never seen her before. I may not remember her name even now, but look at how famous that young lady has become because the king favored her and he invited her to his inauguration and she stood there and boldly said a poem and that poem lifted our dear little lady amanda from wherever she was on the streets of california and brought her to the limelight of the international front favor makes you famous glory to jesus favor makes you famous when the lord chooses to favor you i'm telling you there is nothing that can put you down here you will go and climb up later upon later later upon later and you will find yourself in the limelight without having done anything without payment of money without doing anything else out of, outside of the of the ordinary god himself himself chooses to favor people. But unfortunately, in our lives, we always think there's something we need to do to give back for that favor that we have been given freely so that we will feel like we deserve it, we, uh, we have earned it, and so we feel like we can connect to it, possess it, and flow in it. Help us, God. Ah, uh, we ha have a theme of one sister in the Lord. I will call her Leah, but you can put your name on it because I know that the last life and last testimony resonates with many of us, resonates with our lives, resonates with our life living style, resonates with our struggles. As the Lord has called us and positioned us where we are, Leah was one person who was highly favored by God. How do I know? Leah was one woman who had not at all known who would ever marry her. And back in the day, it was important that a woman, when they grow up and become of age, they will be married by a good man. And women in the day, and even today, I believe, did not have a, a, it wasn't routine, it wasn't the norm to go and look for somebody to marry them. That would make them a whore or something that is not right, that is not of God. But for a woman to stay in her father's house and to have a man come ask her hand in marriage, that was the greatest honor of the day. Now, because of the appearances of rich Leah, Leah did not know at all if and when this would ever come to be. But even then, Leah looks like she's a woman who loved the Lord in her day. She had a few areas of her life that had very deep commitment with her God. How do I know that when the Lord began to communicate even without speaking with Leah, Leah knew what was in the heart of the Lord and what God was saying about her even when we do not see a conversation between Lord God and Leah because God and Leah in this scope of the story did not talk to each other but the Bible says and the Lord saw that Leah was not loved hmm. the Lord saw and Leah says the Lord has seen. So Leah is a woman who looks like she had had a walk with God. But like any other woman or many women, she was afraid maybe because of her outward appearance, because maybe of the shape of her eyes, because of the color of her skin, who knows? Because of the size of her waistline, who knows? Because of the ability and articulacy to speak before people. Who knows? Because of our ability of command of language. Who knows? Maybe it was something. Those are things that pull women back. And while she was sitting at her father's house, God knew. 
God knew, even when she was sitting at her father's house, God knew that in order for Leah to ever bump into a miracle of her husband, because she was the older and there was a younger sister who was fair, who was beautiful, who was charming, and who was outgoing, and who had already under the eye of a certain brother. Now, to Leah, this was a disappointment. And she may have just held on to God because she did not know what else to do. But I thank God because God did not forget Leah, even when her appearance wasn't what the community or the eye of the beholder would have seen. Glory to Jesus, because God does not favor us because of our outward appearance. God does not attach favor to us because of our connection with people. God does not attach favor with us, to us because of how famous we are. God just favors us out of his own accord. Glory be to Jesus. And the Lord favored the woman who had no idea that she is struggling with admitting that God has favored her. Now, how do I know that God had favored this woman? For some reason, I don't know why the father decided to do what he did. Because he said to his son-in-law, uh, the son to his sister, work for me. No, 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 not even work for me. Do not work for me for free. Just name your wages and I'll give you whatever it is you want. Now, Jacob says, I will work for you seven years. Give me Rachel. Do you understand? It is not Laban who told Jacob to work for seven years to get Rachel. No, no, no. Jacob, Laban would have given Rachel to Jacob without him working seven years. But Jacob named his assignment and his wages. He said, I will work seven years. That will give me Rachel. But while the, the seven years were going on, there was a plan that was behind the curtain because God knows and judges the hearts. Glory to God. God knows and judges the heart. But that when the day came, when Rachel was going to be given, mm, listen to me, God favors us so much. You know, Jacob was willing to work seven years Seven is the number of completion. Jacob was willing to pay the price for the woman he had loved. But I saw the scripture tell me that for God so loved the world and continued to say he did not come for the righteous. He came for even those that are not righteous. He did not come for those who loved him back. He came even for those who did not love him. Listen, Jacob was willing to work seven years for the woman he loved. And if that would have sealed the deal that day, you and me and Rachel and Leah would never have had a place in the redemptive story. Listen very well. God had to insert Leah by his own plan in this seven years of work that Jacob did so that you know, heaven will not just be for the beautiful. Heaven will not be for those that are outwardly becoming. Heaven will not be for those that can earn the love of God because of a few credentials. Heaven will not be for those who can work their way up. Heaven is not for those who can smile back. Heaven is even for those who cannot see. Heaven is for those who cannot prepare themselves. Heaven is for everybody, hallelujah. Reconda Mosiah, why don't you give God the glory that is due his name? And Jesus, God must have seen in heaven that if I allow, Jacob is a son of the covenant, remember? But God is named as the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Jacob was in the line of the covenant and whatever Jacob was going to do because of the redemptive plan of God that he started with his servant Abraham when he brought him into the covenant and when he gave him the gift and the reward of righteousness because of agreeing to believe God, Abraham only believed and God credited it to him as righteousness and he said through you all the nations of the earth will be blessed. How dare you Jacob try to choose Rachel over Leah 
God had said to your ancestor that all the children of the earth will be blessed through Abraham. Jacob, you are the descendant of Abraham. How do you throw away Leah and do you choose a ritual over Leah? How would the redemptive plan of God ever be completed? My God, I give Jesus the glory. I look at Leah and I'm saying, God of favor, mm, in the time of favor, I had you. In the day of salvation, I came and visited with you. Glory to Jesus. God had to favor even the one who was not loved so that that would open a door that there will be a complete circuit of salvation. One would not be left outside because of anything, because of outward appearance, because of a few points that were not right according to the beholder. And God worked it out by his power and Rachel, uh, Rachel did not go ahead of Leah, glory to God. Those that were far back, those that were not loved, they were brought first, glory to God. For the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. The bundle Rosai, the Bible said in the book of Corinthians, in the very place that they were not called my people, in the same place I will call them my people, in the same place where I not loved them, I will love a people that I did not love. Who who are not lovable, who are not lovable. God is not like man. His favor overtakes the ideology of man so that even the, those that cannot, uh, that are not lovable will find a place because the kingdom is not about appearance. The kingdom is about life. Glory to God. The kingdom is about believing. It's about the work of faith. Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. And the Bible says that Rachel, uh, Leah had to have a place. Leah had to have a place. So that the same price, the same price, the same wages, oh, the same price that was paid for Leah was the same price that, uh, uh, the same price that was paid for Rachel is the same price that was paid for Leah. So that those that will find themselves in Leahic, Leahic, Category. I don't know if there is an English word like that. Those who will find themselves in the category of Leah will not be left out anywhere in the kingdom of our God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Those who look like they are not loved. Those who don't have enough burger points so that they, those who can't even be taken for a honeymoon. Those who are not loved. Those, and I know there are many, those that are hearing the sound of my voice and the others that will hear this sound a little later. God had to incorporate Leah and the kind they like have so that the same price that was paid for Rachel will be paid for Leah. Laban stood, hallelujah, as a person of the Holy Spirit. And he is saying, that is not, it cannot be like that. This is not our culture. We don't give the younger first before the older. She is first. She has to get first. Glory to God. And he said, thank you for working seven years. You have, thank you for working seven years. Now take Leah. She, he didn't even know. He didn't think he didn't want Leah. He didn't love her. He didn't like her. But God had to insert an entrance for Leah. Glory be to Jesus. A little door for Leah so that Leah will find a place. Listen to me, my sister. There is a door that the Lord has orchestrated. The door that he has opened for you. Whether people don't like you or not, whether people don't accept you or not, whether society does not accept you or not, whether the system does not fit you in or not, there is a door the Lord has opened up for you. And he says in the book of Revelation, behold, I there is a door, I open a door, he that holds the key of David. He says, behold, I have set an open door before you that no one can shut. God opened a door for Leah that nobody could shut. Jacob could not shut it at all. And the labor could not shut it at all. It was an orchestration of God because of his favor. Favor opens unique doors. Favor opens unique doors. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a door, a, a blessing for you and a door that God has opened for you because of favor, not because of your education, not because of your experience, not because of your knowledge, not because of your physical appearance, not because of the connection 
connections you have, not because of anybody you know, but because of his eternal divine plan. Glory be to Jesus. Hmm. Oh, blessed be his holy name. And the Bible says that when uh, Leah, uh, Jacob woke up in the morning and behold, it was Leah. Although he didn't like her, he wasn't happy. Jacob went back to work. Jacob went back to pay another price. He said, I want my woman. I want my woman. Look at Jesus coming down on us, fighting it out with the enemy. I'm saying, I want my woman. I want my woman because you and me, the church, are that bride of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. And he said, yes, I will give her to you, but you will pay seven years for it. Ah, the same price, the same price. Glory to Jesus. He said, I will go to the cross. I will go to the cross. And seven times he said the word that liberated Leah and liberated Rachel as both as the bride of the husband. Glory be to God. And something happened after that. Look at God's favor. Look at God's favor. That when God saw, God saw, oh, in all this, God was in picture. And he saw that there is something that is going on on the earth, that although Leah was favored by God, there is an acceptance that was not entering that very well. There is a level of acceptance that wasn't coming well. But God said, you don't understand, Jacob. You don't, this is my faculty. This is my assignment. This is my servant. I I have chosen her, the, whether you like her or you don't like her, that is beside the point. Whether you do your assignment on her or not, I have favored her still. Glory to Jesus. I need to encourage a sister right there. Whether men love you or not, as long as God has favored you, you still have your mountain standing strong. You are royal mountain, you still stand strong. Glory to Jesus. Some of us have been struggling, wanting to please men instead of articulating the favor of God, wanting to come and bow before human beings, before systems, before culture, before a tradition, so that we look like we are acceptable. Because if we say something different from what tradition says, something different from what the culture says, something different from what the main, strain is, main line is saying, something different from what the orthodox is saying, it looks like we are outside of favor. But how many people are struggling in a cage right now, are struggling in a compassion struggling to try to please a system so that they will look acceptable. Yet the favor of God is waiting for you at all times. The favor of God, the Bible tells me in the book of Ephesians chapter number one, Ephesians chapter number one, I'll read it for you right now. And I thank God for his faithfulness. The Bible says, uh, Ephesians chapter number one and verse number 11, the Bible says that in him, in him, we also have received an inheritance. In him, we also have received an inheritance, a destiny. We were claimed by God as his own, having been predestined, having been chosen beforehand, according to the purpose of him who works everything in agreement with the counsel and the design of his will. Listen to me, we were predestined. We were chosen in advance. Glory to God. The problem is that we think that favor began when we were born. Favor began when we started growing teeth. Favor began when we started right, knowing to write our names. Listen, God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the earth was laid. And he assigned favor unto you and unto me so that our important uh, uh, assignment on earth is to find out what the will of the Lord is and to begin to connect with that will and let man align with God's will over your life. Shall I say that one more time? God chose us from the beginning before the foundation of the earth were laid and he has certain favor unto us and through Jesus who died for us, through Jesus who uh, called us, who came to seek and save that which was lost, 
he endorsed that favor, glory to Jesus, so that any human being who is attaching themselves to your life will have to align with God's favor and will over your life. That way, you cease to be a captive of systems, you cease to be a captive of men, you cease to be men pleasers instead of the pleasers of God. That's what the Bible says, therefore, do not be pleasers of men, but please the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Ah, do not be pleasers of men or self, but be thou pleasers of God. That is what God has called us unto to be. Glory to Jesus. Leah was dangling between two things that were becoming a little bit hefty for our sister. The Bible says uh, when he knew God knew she wasn't loved she herself knew that she wasn't loved but even then God still extended such favor upon her that God gave her productivity God gave her started to download the gifts and the rewards of favor what goes along with favor glory to Jesus God started adding blessing upon blessing because when God favors you he continues to shower you with his blessing the Bible said because God saw that Leah was not loved he says that he opened up her womb and she began to be productive glory to Jesus look at God's beauty he opened up her womb. The problem with Leah is that she was still struggling between this favor of God and it was as if it may be the only way God can favor me is if I find and work very hard to attach myself to a man, to attach myself to the human system, to attach myself to one whom I think that when they love me, I will be all right. But I want to, uh, to bring it to you something that I know you are already know. And if you didn't know, now this scripture has let you know. Did you know that a man does not need to, have, to love you in order to give you children? I post for a reason. A man does not need to love you in order to give you children. A man will have sex with you and give you different children and several children, not because they love you, but because it is their drive and desire that makes you do that. If you think you're going to satisfy a man because of your conjugal re uh, relationship, sorry, you better look for a foundation of love, my God, that will help you stand beyond the time even when you cannot perform. Glory to Jesus. Every time that Leah had a baby who said, hey, behold a son. Now my, my, my husband will love me. Now my husband will love me. She is mistaking the favor of God and the blessing of God and the fact that God has seen her misery. Instead of connecting that to that God's favor and return the praises to God, she is here trying to connect favor, trying to connect what it is that would complete her circuit as a human being. My God, and that she struggled. I bet you she must have done this over and over and over. She did it and got a Reuben. She did it and got a Simeon. She did it and got a Levi. She did it. She did it three times. Every time she is saying, God has seen, God has had, and she knows that God is speaking. She knows that God is communicating. She knows that God is into her business. But for some reason, she is running and shunning that voice away because she wants to please man. This is where we struggle so many times. And I pray that tonight, as we wind up this conference, that by the grace of God, we will mature, we will graduate. What I mean is that you will graduate to the level of having to jostle between the will of God and the pleasure of men, between the will of God and the desire of men, between pleasing man and the pleasing Jehovah, because this is our struggle moment, and we end up doing so much. We end up doing so much because we don't know how to let go and let God, to let go and let God. We just want to get in there. It's 
so that we are acceptable in the society, so that we are acceptable, so that per se we will be loved. Listen to me. You will not be loved by pleasing men. You will be loved by God first. And then he will cause those that didn't love you to begin to connect with you in due time. Praise the name of Jesus. Ah, God does not favor you because men love you. Oh God, I'm short of time. My God, the fact that people don't like you, the fact that people don't understand you, the fact that you are in a world of your own quote and quote does not diminish the favor of God upon you. Listen, when God's eye is upon you, when God's favor is upon you, Ah, that is an end of a story. Oh my God, because God does not borrow from the wealth of man to see what he will do, uh, to see what to do for you and to keep for you. The Lord wants us to come to the place where we can begin to praise him without any strings attached, without connecting to anything, without having to connect with those who like or don't like us, to have, without having to connect with those who accept us or who don't. The favor of man is only uh, temporary, but the favor of God is forever. Glory be to God. He says your anger lasts only a moment, but your favor is for a lifetime. Understand that the favor of God be goes beyond our relationship, goes beyond our knowledge, goes beyond our articulation and our ability to understand. Glory be to Jesus. And God wants to us to come to the place. My God, if everybody will understand by the grace of the Lord, the revelation of the Judah, glory to God, because although she wasn't loved at this point, after trying three times to be accepted, to be attached, to be connected, to be loved, to be heard when she was still struggling to struggling between the rivalry of Rachel and the hatred of Rachel and the hatred of Judah, uh, Jacob, when she was there hustling with that and forgetting God's favor, yet God continued to talk to her indirectly. When God saw, when God had, when God had, when God saw, that's what the Bible says, God saw so she wasn't loved. God saw her affliction. God had and saw her misery. Even if God was into her life, God was into her case. God was into every affair. For some reason, Rachel wasn't seeing that. Rachel wasn't connecting with that. She was looking to please a man instead of turning this unto God who had loved and was concerned over her affairs. Now our time had to come when Rhea had to graduate it. Glory to Jesus. I pray that we graduate in this beginning of 2021. As the servant of God said, it's time to move on. It is a year to move on. It's a time to say, you know what? I have tried to please men and it is not working. I've tried to assert my place and it is not working. I've tried to make a name around my estate and it is not working. I have tried to make people understand my point and it is not working. I have tried for people to know that I am not the bad girl in the estate and it is not working. I have tried to let people know I am not the bad woman in church, but it is not working. I have tried to bring my point to people to try to explain myself and it is not working. I pray that by the grace of God as I wait up tonight, that now we will look up because there is something that is going on. Even when people don't like you, look at what God did for Leah. He allowed her to name every child she gave birth to. God allowed Leah to name every son that she gave birth to. She gave birth to the firstborn and she named him. The last I checked in the Bible, it is the man who named their children and she gave birth to a son and he named him. The fathers would name the children for some reason. Although Leah was not like, God so favored her that she put her in a unique position to name what she gives birth to. Listen, my sister, even if nobody understands you in the village and your woman and you're travailing in the spirit, the Lord will not give that honor to another to name what you bring forth. When you bring forth the ministry you've been travailing for, God will give you the favor 
of the favor of the Lord will allow that you name it. Hallelujah. That you name it. Glory to God. He said, I will name this. God has had. I will name this. God remembers. I will name this. Praise the name of Jesus. God will allow you to name it. An office that wasn't given to women back in the day. God, because of favor, gave an enabled layer the permission to name what she had brought forth. Glory to Jesus. And look what Leah brought forth. Leah brought forth royalty. Judah was the royal household. Levi was the priest uh, household. The household of the uh, of the high, of the priest. Glory to Jesus. Look at what God can do. Simeon had his inheritance in Judah. Glory to Jesus. Later on, the same woman who wasn't loved. The Bible says that she gave birth to Issachar, even after she had stopped giving birth. But later she gave back to Issachar. The children of Issachar were important in the day, in their day, because we are told they understood the times. They understood the times. People of loyalty, people of sensitivity. Leah was favored by God to produce a pro mandala brusai, to produce what Jacob could not hit, what Jacob could not frustrate. Ah, who knew? Who knew that Jacob, whatever he didn't like, was going to produce for him what was going to shape, to shape him as the uh, as the the custodian of the inheritance and the covenant of God? Lord, who knew? Who knew that this was going to come through the woman he didn't like? Some people may not understand the kind of ministry you do, the kind of assignment God has given you, the kind of, and please, you're trying to make people understand, you know I'm an intercessor, you know God speaks to me, you know God shows me and speaks to me in visions, you know God directs me this and that. Ah, ah, my sister, chill, stop trying to explain yourself to people, stop trying to assert your place in the people. Stop trying to validate the favor of God upon you. Um, uh, to people. People will only make it worse. May you, by the grace of God, get to the place where you graduate and say from this day on, from the sixth, the seventh day of February 2021, now I graduate, I mature, I will begin to praise the Lord, whether men love me or not, whether systems accept me or not, whether I am invited to preach in the next conference or not, my God, I will praise the Lord, whether I have favor or fame or not, I will praise the Lord. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Whether I do a conference, ministers, my friend, whether I do a conference and 300 people come and I do another and only 20 come, that is not the issue. My work is to focus on God and to praise him. My God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we will, we will make a praise our priority. Make a praise our priority. Go God has been waiting for you all this time, for you to connect with the place of favor, for you to connect with his favor, so that he will show you what you did not know. May the name of Jesus be exalted. I pray in this hour, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that Lord our God, help us to come out of the struggle that we have gone through for so long. Struggles to try to assert our names and our reputation among men. But what is seen is temporal. But what is unseen is eternal. Help us to fix our affections on things above, where favor comes from, and where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Help Help us, Jehovah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to connect with the heaven, to connect, oh God, even with what is eternal in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord. We thank you, Father. We worship your holy name. We thank you that you have favored us. Now cause our mountains to stand strong and let our enemies see that you have favored us and let their, 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 their slightness, let their attacks, let their hatred be put to shame because you have shown us your salvation in our day. Let your name take glory in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen. And God bless you abundantly. Wow.
glory, glory, glory. Thank you. Thank you so much, Apostle Lucy Muthami. All glory, all glory and honor be to God. What a powerful, what a powerful word. What a way to end this four day. Oh my. Wow. We have to graduate from the level of pleasing men. We have to graduate from the level of praising men and praise God. Wow. May we remember this. This is, this is deep. May we remember, you know, there's one thing that I know that whatever it is, whatever it is that you need horizontally from people, seek for it vertically. When you seek for it from the Lord, Apostle Muthami has just explained it to us. When you seek whatever you need from the Lord, the Lord will align, the Lord will align everything else. It is not time to please man, it is time to please God. Whatever it is you need, seek for it on your knees and the Lord just aligns things. We've been told that the Lord surrounds us with favor as a guard. Can you imagine we are guarded by the favor of God and God chose us and asserted favor and Jesus Christ endorsed the favor. There's an endorsement of favor upon our lives by Jesus Christ. What else are we searching for? We are searching for favor in the wrong places. We are searching for favor in the wrong places. Wow, I'm empowered. Let us be reminded, whatever favor we want with men, let us go to God and ask from God and God will align favor with everybody else. I am so blessed. I am so, so empowered. These four nights that the Lord set apart and let us remember every night that we had a woman of God speak to us, I'm looking at everything that we were told, and these were not sermons. These were messages from the Lord. These were messages. We've been told about the now. What do we do about the midnight hour? We are equipped. We have to step up and raise up a praise beyond the situation we are going through. And then yesterday, we were told about praising the Lord regardless of the situation. We were told about Paul and Cyrus being in jail, tight in a corner. And what they did was shouting out their praise. Because when we don't do that, when we complain, we discredit God. And we closed it out by being told we have to step it up. We have to graduate from the level of trying to seek favor from everybody else around us but God. We've already been credited favor in our lives. Let's walk in favor and let's not be afraid. Let's not feel like we have to earn it. He gives it to us freely. So we wear our favor well and we praise our God, amen. Uh, we are coming to the end. Um, I'm looking for my twin sister. I don't know if she's in a position to jump in. If not, just wave at me. Where is she? Um, it's that really, really uh, important time before we close. We have two more things and then we end uh, that I want to give everybody another opportunity, another opportunity uh, to do the love offering, to give a gift to the Lord. We cannot bypass this very, very important divine time that we give back to God what he has given to us so faithfully. Uh, and again, I don't know if we still have patience. I cannot see from my screen. Patience has been so awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, posting the cash up numbers on the screen. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's just give really, really, um, let us go to our phones, cash up. Let us give a love offering to the Lord. We have to get into the practice. We don't go uh, in the presence of the Lord empty handed. We partner with God. God is a rich God, but he gives us an opportunity to partner with him. The cash up number is on the screen. Um, and also, yeah, the website too. We can also give through the website. Uh, and when we get to the website, it will walk us through PayPal and also um, through a credit card. Yeah, gloriouspowerchurch.org. Uh, we can all see that. Uh, let us give to the Lord. Let us, you know, when we uh, give to the Lord, when we do the work of the Lord, you know, we are part and parcel of everything that is going on. You know, I love to bless even missionaries when they are going. There are places I cannot go, but when I bless them, I'm part and parcel of what is going on. Let us continue um, giving before we, we, we move on. Hope I'm not distracting anybody. Let's Okay, anybody who did not get the cash up number, please um, let me know. Put it on the uh, on the chat, and we can always remind. We can always um, uh, post it again. Again, it is so important, and I know I mentioned uh, at the beginning, and I still want to stress. Please allow me to stress this one more time. You know, uh, when I said about as as women knowing. We are so influential in the lives that we meet and especially our children. You know, somebody said that a mother is the most influential uh, person, human being in a child's life. I shared, I believe it was on the second day, a 10 year old in class who asked the teacher, why do we even have to continue uh, uh, studying and learning, and we are going to die anyway. He was talking about, you know, watching the news, you know, the coronavirus and the death rates and all that. And he told that yeah, we are just all about to die from corona and if not corona from terrorists. So why are we even coming to schools to study? And I just want to bring that again, because it is so important because when you listen to that, this child is already uh, uh, is suffering from a spirit of hopelessness and, and that grows into depression, you know, that grows into rebellion. So it is so, so important that we remember, I think we are too much airtime uh, to, to the enemy. So we have to Cancel, you know, seek counsel. And actually, I'm remembering, and please, I know Pastor Lucy, please allow me to say this. Um, there's a, this program, Teens and Twins, that's just coming to my mind. It's and Pastor Lucy, I know, I know you're okay. Let me just let me just say this. There is this program that's teens and twins. It's usually on Saturday morning, uh, from 10 from 10 to 12. Because I know sometimes we are not able to be with the children in the morning. And however we can impact the children, because all we need is to teach the children the right, you know, to be strengthened, to have hope, to know what it is to hope in the Lord, so that when these other things happen in their life, they are not distracted and they don't end up in that spiral of hopelessness and, and, um, and depression. So the Teens and Twins program is a program, you know, after your child eats whatever he gets for breakfast, you know, those nice bacons or, you know, uh, guaches or whatever, you know, cereal, whatever they get for breakfast, they get into a class from 10 to 12. Pastor Lucy has this big burden, I say it again, of bringing up the children um, in the fear of the Lord. 
and whatever state you are in. If you need any more information, ask me, any of the leaders, uh, Minister Susan, uh, you can even uh, ask Pastor Lucy about it because we have to guard our children in all ways. It is so important for us to do that to save our generation. Um, I will invite uh, Pastor Lucy, but I am seeing, oh, I'm seeing a pastor that I didn't recognize. And I just want to give a shout out to Pastor Beatrice. I do not know where she is, but wherever you are, wave at me. I saw Pastor Adokas Ndamboki too. Atewe Yesu. Um, I think those are the only other pastors that I'm seeing that I didn't acknowledge. Women of God, we appreciate your presence. Uh, Pastor Lucy, I want to invite you to give a vote of thanks as we come to an end. Amen, amen. Wow, what a conclusion. We thank God, thank you so, so much. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's such a powerful, powerful conclusion. And uh, we thank God for the favor of God. We have received it. We don't need to earn it. And it's such a powerful, powerful conclusion. Thank you so much, Apostle Lucy Modami. That was so powerful. I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to our speakers. Um, Dr. Anne Mungai, uh, you are on on Facebook. Uh, you, she texted me, said she's on on Facebook. And thank you, receive our gratitude for accepting the call, the invitation. We acknowledge you and we honor the anointing of God in your life. Uh, we wanna appreciate uh, Pastor Susan Mungai from Iowa. Thank you so, so much for allowing God to use you in such a mighty way yesterday. Uh, we wanna appreciate Apostle Lucy Mudami. Thank you for such a powerful ending tonight. We really, really honor God for you. I wanna take this moment to appreciate the moderators. They have done an awesome, awesome job. And as I give this vote of thanks, I wanna do the Galilee view. And I want, if you are in a position to just turn on your camera, please do that. If you're in a position to turn on your camera, do that. And uh, patience is gonna take like a, a group photo. You know, when we finish the meeting, if we are in the church, we take a group photo. So patience is gonna take a group photo <laughs> on the screen. So turn on your camera, we see those smiles and we really appreciate uh, God for you. Our moderators, Minister Leah, Minister Susan, they have done an amazing job. I wanna commend them because they have been keeping time give them a thumbs up, yeah? They've been give, they have been keeping time. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Uh, I want to uh, appreciate our psalmist, Anita Flo, Wariera Wero, the anointing of God. It's one thing to be gifted and it's another thing for the gift to be anointed. And I want to just ask everybody who is, logged in and who has been listening in these meetings. We are in a new era. Our psalmists are not coming to sell you CDs or flash drives in this meeting, but they have YouTube channels. So I urge you, we support them by subscribing to their YouTube channels. So Anita, can you unmute and tell us the name of your YouTube channel? And these ladies, these wonderful ladies are going to subscribe you're gonna get some subscription. We are like 60 women here. If you get an additional 60 subscribers, you are you are before Ukombele, yeah? <laughs> what is the name of your YouTube channel? Anita Flo. Anita Flo is the name on YouTube, yeah. Anita Flo is the name on YouTube. So ladies, let's do the honors. Go on YouTube, uh, search Anita Flo and subscribe. That's the way we can promote our summit this time because we are not buying the the cds mm -hmm. all right so uh minister uh, Wariara Wero, give us your name of the 
YouTube channel so that we're gonna go there. We are we are faithful ladies. We're gonna go and subscribe. You're gonna get subscribers tonight. And let's do it tonight before we forget. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. So it's Wariara Weru. Wariara Weru. The same names we used on the flyer. So in case you forget the names, I can see my mother writing them down so that she doesn't forget. So that when she goes to YouTube, she's gonna search them. Yeah. <laughs> So even if you forget the names, the, the names are the ones on the flyer. So let's subscribe to their channel because they have been a blessing to us for these four days. They've been taking us to the throne and we've been really, really blessed. I want to take this opportunity to appreciate the Women Ministers Network. The women ministers, you have been showing up and supporting us, and we give God the glory for what you have been doing. I want to take this opportunity to appreciate the family of Glorious Power Church for the coordination, for the planning, for the prayers. Thank you, thank you so, so much, because from the beginning, this is the fourth year, when the Lord gave us the pattern of doing this structured meeting. You have never said, Pastor, we are tired. Every year you're like, even this year when when the year started and I said, give me a week, I will say whether we have the women meeting, you kept on saying we can do it. Even if it's virtually, we can do it. Thank you for the, for the faith. Thank you for the encouragement. I really, really appreciate. I'm still saying this as I wait for more people to turn on their cameras. I can see patients says we have, we have to make sure we go to the next page. Yeah, make sure you take all the, all the pictures, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I really, really appreciate. Our online uh, people who have been attending online on WhatsApp, I mean, on Facebook and later on, there are people who have been really willing to attend, but because of their time zone or because of work, uh, they have been watching later on YouTube. We really appreciate and God bless you. God bless you all. We really appreciate everything that you have done and we give God the glory. We give God all the glory. I want to, uh, uh, invite a friend of mine who is going to say a prayer for the ministers or everybody who has been ministering and um, I'm going to go back now to high writing so that she say that prayer and then after that prayer I'm going to hand over back to Leah to tell us what next so I'm going to ask my friend Esther Karinge who is one of my prayer partners to pray for the ministers and bless every one of them Praise be to God. I am very blessed by this conference and I thank God uh, for all the ministers that have ministered to us this weekend. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you with thanksgiving. We bless your holy name. We thank you for who you are. We glorify your holy name. We have come and gathered this weekend because we wanted to hear from you. When we started, Lord, we pray that we want to hear from you. And yes, God, you have spoken to each and every one of us. Every one of us have heard, one way or the other, we have heard from you, Lord. So Father, we thank you even to get to this place of the end of the meeting. I pray that every minister who have ministered to us, Pastor Lucy, Apostle Modami, Dr. N, Dr. Ann Minor, and the rest and the moderators who have really, really done a great job. So Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, uh, even in this dark time, Lord, this time we can even meet in churches or the places we should meet, Lord. You have found favor for us to meet in this place, Lord, and to communicate with each other and uplift one another. So Father, we thank you for all those ministers who have ministered to us. And now I pray that all the, the good work that has been done to us, Lord, that God, we may go out there to plant the same seed and bless another woman and bless somebody else who is stuck somewhere else. So Father, give us that favor and walk with us. So Father, we surrender this night to you. We surrender this meeting to you, Lord, that you may continue to do your will and may you continue to walk with us. It's in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. And 
now I declare the 2021 Ladies Empowerment Nights officially closed and we prepare for the fifth annual, which will be the first weekend of 2022. You can start marking your calendars and be ready to attend either virtually or physically. Let's be expectant of whichever way it shall be for the glory of God. Back to you, Leah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Pastor Lucy. All right. All right, something disappeared on my screen. I couldn't see anybody. I thought I was home alone. Um, thank you, thank you so much, everybody. I don't even have words to say. Everything has been said. We are well, we are well equipped. We are empowered and ready to go out there and do what God has called us to do. I just want to give... A, um, you know, um, benediction. We still need to do a benediction. Um, and I see our pastor, uh, Doreen Otipo, is ready to do that. <laughs> She's ready to pray as of. But thank you, thank you so much, uh, uh, everybody, for being here. And I believe this was life-changing. We will see things. We will hear testimonies. Let's keep in touch. Let's keep in touch, women. I know we can see each other, but let's not be strangers. Now there are so many ways of us reaching out to each other. If we are not careful, we'll forget each other. So uh, uh, let us uh, keep keep connected. Let's keep connected. So nice to see you. My name is Leah Karanja. Awesome, awesome, nice to see you. Um, all right, I will have uh, Pastor Doreen uh, say the benediction and then we can open to saying hello. I know a lot of us are missing to say hello to, uh, to people. So don't leave, you can wave. If you are not in a hurry, say something uh, after the benediction. Amen, amen. I thank God for this moment and for giving us a chance to be in his presence for all the days that we have been here. I believe that God has ministered to us in a very, very special way. Um, I, I was, was having some trouble with the, my, my computer, uh, but I hope that it will not disconnect me anytime soon. That's why I connected with my phone in case of anything. <laughs> Yeah, Pastor yeah. Lucy, I'm going to pray, pray but that my voice will come through, through the phone. phone. God bless, bless you, you all. Um, I am so, so blessed by what God has done. I just want to speak uh, a blessing to all of us as we leave this conference, knowing that what God has done is supernatural. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we are so grateful to you, God all these three days that we have come together as women. Father, you have used your servants to empower us. You have used their voices, Lord, to speak over our lives, to speak of our situations, to speak over our marriages, to speak over every side of our lives. Thank you for your voice that we have heard loud and clear. Father, you have encouraged us. You have empowered us. You have lifted our spirits. My God and my Father, many of us who are going through different situations, but because of this conference, God, you have empowered us. You have encouraged us to move on. Father, we are coming with a, a thanksgiving to you, Lord, because of your servant, Pastor Lucy Painter. My God and my Father, we pray together as we end this conference, Lord, that you will continue to anoint her with a fresh fire, fresh anointing, God, that whatever she does in this community, that God, you will amplify her voice for the glory 
and honor of your name. Thank you, Father, for the power of influence that you have given her. We pray that you will increase this for your glory. Thank you for every woman that attended this conference. Thank you for those who followed on Facebook. Thank you for those, God, who came in on Zoom, my Father. Thank you for every state that was represented. We believe that, God, this is going to be a different year of all, my Father. From today, Father Lord, you're making a mark. You're putting a demarcation, my God. There shall be written a story that this year of 2021, this conference, my God, something happened in the spiritual realm that will never be forgotten, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for every heart that you have healed. Thank you for every soul that you have lifted. Thank you for every message that you have spoken to us. We don't take anything for granted. You have reminded us our position. You have reminded us, oh God, that our midnight will not last forever. You have reminded us, oh God, that your favor is part of us. We should not live, we should not struggle because we already have it. It has already been credited to us. Thank you, dear God. Thank you for all that happened. Thank you for the worship ministers. Thank you for those who led the service. Thank you for every one of us. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. We pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 God amen. bless you. Thank you. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Doreen. And thank you so much, uh, my sister Esther Karinge, for also that prayer. And may God bless you. Uh, and I think we are dismissed. Um, it is over. Shalom, shalom. But it's only officially over. We are still here um, saying hi. Is mom still here? Yes, mom is here. Hi, mom. mom. Unmute. Mom, say, say hi before... We don't know the next time Pastor Lucy will allow us to see you. Unmute, ma'am. It, it's unmuted now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Asante. Ubarikiwe pia. Amen. Pastor Lucy, anyway, our patients can say hello. Uh, patients, are you, can you unmute? Are you shy, patients? Hi, everyone. Hi. So nice to see your generation with us all through. Esther, where is Esther? Esther, Esther, Esther Otipo. Esther Otipo was here. Did she leave? Did she leave? <laughs> yes, I, I think she left. Oh, Mrs. Ann. Peter is here. Hi. <laughs> Unmute to Salimie. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Amen. I am Pastor Anne. Amen. I bless the Lord tonight. Thank you so much for such a wonderful message. We are so blessed of the Lord. And we know that we shall be empowered and we are favored of the Lord. The Lord bless you. Amen. 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 My twin sister, Minister Susan YJP, you've not said hello today. <laughs> you, are, you are muted. You really Pastor, don't want us Pastor to hear. Lucy, Pastor Lucy decided to mute me completely. Oh, <laughs> man. Say hello. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm so glad, I'm so happy.
uh, for this conference. It's a very, it's a powerful, powerful conference. Uh, mommy, you are on spotlight. How are you, Mama? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're able to share it, Pastor Lusky. I'm fine. So, so after how you can hear Goko. Sorry, thank you. 